Okay, guys, it's confession time. I got busted uh, on two things. Confession on two things. First off, you know these bacon-flavored toothpicks? Uh, guess what? I ran out of bacon-flavored toothpicks a long time ago, and I put other uh, toothpicks in here. There might be, like, one real bacon-flavored toothpick or a couple left in here, um, but they're not all bacon-flavored toothpicks. I really don't want to be uh, the next subject of a, a Mueller investigation or anything. So, next time, just understand, there might not really be bacon-flavored toothpicks. So, but you still need to buy some. You probably should just send them to me for everything I do for you, right? All right, Dan. Um, before I forget, bottom of uh, the page, end of the episode, after my email shows up, you can send me an email and scathe me like the other people have over the falsified bacon-flavored toothpicks. Uh, and my subscribe button are there. Thanks for your subscriptions and your loyalty. Now, let's move on. The next thing was... Remember the last episode, F-Holes? Uh, I got a comment that said, other than you making a, a loose innuendo that some people are F-Holes, I never said that. I might have thought it, but I never said that. So, um, they said that I showed a couple examples of F-Holes and other guitars, but I never really showed you how to do F-Holes. Instead, I uh, clickbaited you and trolled you into looking at all these wonderful samples of sound hole covers. That was kind of the idea of the episode. Sorry. Anyway, so I'm doing another episode. This time, it's really about F-holes, and I'm going to call it a big F-hole. Edit that. The episode, this episode is called a real F-hole. A real big F hole. Okay, let's go. All right, let's go to my corner. I'm actually going to be able to use this clip for two episodes. One about the headstock. Um, I'm going to post a, a link that Bradley I'm Small uh, post, posted for uh, headstock templates and one that Randy Bratz posted for F hole templates. But in this episode, we're going to use this airline arch top that I have. To show you how to do an F hole. So let's grab that off the wall. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a little simple little trick using a Sharpie, some painter's tape, and a pair of scissors, and that F hole right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take this painter's tape, and I'll put a strip there. And one there. And we'll do an extra one there, just like so. And then I'm going to push this down where I can see the shape of the F hole in the tape. You see that? Then I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to go right along the edge with the chisel side, like so, until I trace out this whole F hole. There we go. And you can feel when you're in the F hole because there's no resistance, but as I go down and do this, this whole thing is filled in. And you can see now when I peel this off because these stick together, I have a template that I can just cut out. I'm gonna take my scissors here. I'm gonna pull this off. like so and then I'm just going to cut that out with the scissors perfect all right there we go we've got a perfectly sized replica of this sound hall and it's on sticky tape so I could put this on a piece of wood on a piece of paper make a template use it directly to make the f hole and we'll show you how to do that in the shop all right, we're out at the work uh, bench. I'm going to set this aside for a minute. I'm going to actually need this because I'm going to tear. Remember this box that we used for a guinea pig for the original F hole, I mean sound hole episode. So I'm going to be tearing this apart and again building templates out of it. So let this, 
let's get that out of the way. Hey, check this out. You like that? Old Dutch. Why Dutch? Well, because if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much, brother. Now I got some Mississippi Fred McDowell going on in the background. And the specific album is Mississippi Fred McDowell Live at the Gaslight in New York City. Uh, this was recorded in 1971, about six months before Fred passed away. The Gaslight is a really important place. It's going to come into an episode I'm going to do about a Sun House guitar. It's where a lot of the revival uh, blues artists that they found and brought back in the 60s played. So... I'm going to give you a link to find this. This is a great album. You're really going to like uh, the John Henry uh, version that's on this album. Mississippi Fred McDowell, live in New York City at the Gaslight, 1971. Now back to the task at hand. You remember uh, from me putting this painter's tape, this here, on top of a guitar with an actual F hole. I cut this out. I want you to notice here that one of these holes or circles up here is smaller than this one here. Now, I think this is meant it's ornate. You put this up at the top, you could reverse these. But if you're going to put a pair of these on the guitar of your building, you, you want to remember that either you're going to drill these holes the same size or you're going to have to deal with one being bigger than the other. So you're going to mirror the image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a piece of cardstock here. We're going to do a little computer trick. And I'm going to put this F hole on the cardstock like so. The reason it sticks again is painter's tape and I can peel it off and on pretty easy. But there we go. All right, let's make our way over to the scanner. Oh, hey, check that out. There's some more Camacho boxes to add to those few I have already. They're kind of running out anyway. Ha ha. There's my scanner. Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remind you that I did an episode about graphics. I'm going to give you a link. That's going to pop up about right here. Right now you're going to see a little eye pop up. Anyway, we're going to put this in the scanner. And we're going to scan at a really high resolution in a JPEG. JPEG. And I want you to check it out. I've got a little flash drive here, a pocket drive. I'm going to put that into the scanner right there again we're going to put this in the scanner and then I'm going to scan this and put the image on that flash drive all right so let me see if I can get this over here I'm going to hit scan to a memory device and then I'm going to pick the document type I don't want a PDF I want a JPEG because when I put this into a text box in Word like it shows in my graphics episode, um, it's going to be hard to size if I use a J, anything other than a JPEG. So the resolution, I'm going to crank that up to the highest this goes. And it's telling me I need to do that from the glass or here. So I've got that upside down. Now I just hit start scan. It's going to scan it. It's going to put it to this flash drive that I can plug in any computer. All right, it is scanned. Now I can pull this out safely and take my piece of paper. And let's go back to the workbench. Oh yeah, you want to cover up your scanner if you got one in the shop because it gets all full of dust and you don't want that. Now I use a Sundate date bag, which is meant to cover the fruit on palm trees, the dates you like to put in your date nut bread banana date bread whatever thank you sun date coachella valley all right my scanner's covered up so it doesn't get dust in it now i'm back on the bench i'm gonna take a pencil and i'm gonna find a way to make sure i know uh where this edge of this ethyl template is on this piece of paper before i take it off so i'm just going to trace this around i can either do it like so I can draw a line like this, whatever. I just want to make sure I end up with a piece of paper with this F hole on before I pull this off of here. Now I drew around it, it's rough, but if I want to be really tricky, I'm just going to take some black spray paint and do that. And that's going to show up real good when I pull this off of here.
All right, there we go. I'm going to put this away somewhere. So I always have this. If something happens with my digital file. I can uh, refer back to this and scan it. Just being safe. All right, back to our guinea pig box. I'm going to open it up. It had an extra piece of wood in here. I'm going to use this one. It'll work good. I'm going to take my F-hole template. And I'm going to stick it on right there like that now i'm gonna pay attention that where the uh, big circle and small circle are anyway just for ease of visual on this episode i'm gonna take that paint and i'm gonna give it a quick blast because we're gonna have to cut this f hole out you wouldn't want to do this on a guitar you're working on Unless, of course, it was going to be that color. Um, you always want to get your graphics on after you cut these holes or whatever. Let's let that dry a little bit. I'll pull this off, and then we'll actually cut this out. All right, there we go. If you were to take this and put it on a template, you could always use a, a template out of wood. I could actually cut this out and use it as a template. I could put a sticky tape on both sides, and then I could just flip it on top of a guitar, uh, and then use the other side of it for the other side, flip them over, do whatever I want. That's double-sided sticky tape is really good stuff. Okay, I'm going to take a couple pieces of net cutoffs I got here and get this up off of the bench, like so. Put this one out here. A couple pieces of wood there that are kind of messing me up. But anyway, let's get it up off the bench like that. Now I'm going to show you a cool little trick here that's going to save you a bunch of time. Can you imagine, even with a piece of paper and a scissors, trying to cut these circles out? Uh, and, and you got to remember, we got to cut all of this out. And so what are we going to do? We're going to drill a hole here and then start on the scroll saw and do all this kind of thing. Hey, remember my Forstner bits that I told you you can't live without? Remember I told you that this circle is a little bit bigger than this one? Well, what I'm going to do is I found the Forstner bits that match these circles here. So if I put this right in the center of the circle like that, there, that one there, and that one there, and drill these out, I got a lot of the heavy work done here. And then I can just take this over to my scroll saw, take the blade off loose, and stick this down over with the hole here already. And cut the rest of it out so let me get these cut off for you to show you what that looks like okay guys I put another piece of old net cut off here in the middle so when I'm pressing down it's support you want to remember this is thin wood uh, so you want to support it uh, and the next thing you want to remember is when you're putting your Forstner bit to this if it hangs up it'll it'll mash this wood up and make it very unattractive and you don't want that unless you're gonna cover it with a graphic you still don't want that but anyway when I put my Forstner bit in I'm going to make sure that the clutch is set way down I don't want the drill hanging up while I'm drilling this so now I've got the tip of the Forstner bit in the middle of where this hole is and I'm going to work this through very gently like so okay you want to remember this is really thin wood here if I hammer all the way through it's going to splinter on the other side so if you can see right there the tip of the Forstner bit has come to right there. If I put that tip right there and work this side just a little bit, it's going to give me a really clean edge when I finally pop through from this side here. There we go. Nice and clean. All right, now I'm going to switch the bit. Don't forget to switch the bit because that hole is a little bit bigger. There we go. And we'll repeat the process here. Get that lined up good. All right, look at that. A lot of work done for us right there. Imagine trying to cut that out on a scroll saw with a little coping saw or something. So... Let's take this over now to the scroll saw and get the rest of this cut out.
Now welcome to the dustiest area in my shop here, um, near my scroll saw, my belt sander. Uh, what I've got to do now is take uh, the rest of this and cut it out. I've got a good spot to start here, but I don't want to come in from this way and ruin my holes there. So I'm going to take this blade off here by simply relaxing this arm. I can either press it down and pop it loose like that. I'm going to take this guide up out of the way at first. Pull this forward like so. Drop that down. I don't want that guard to be up high because if it's not just a tad above the work, you're going to end up with it bouncing around and shredding things. But once this is back, you always want to make sure that everything is unplugged when you're doing this part. Because if it kicks on, you're going to be missing fingers before it starts. But there we go. That is how you do this. This is a little bit tight here. So I'm going to raise this up just a tad. Again, I want to be able to move this freely, but I don't want to have it hung up and bouncing all over the place. So there's a fine line between too tight where you can't move your work and then it bouncing like this and shredding everything. Because when you get to this point, you got some time into it and you don't want to ruin it. And if you're doing this on a real cigar box, you don't want to ruin the top of your box. I want to show you, I, I have this on a foot feed. I also have it on a speed control. I can go really slow or faster like this. I can also control it with my foot pedal, almost like a, a wow pedal, but I can turn it way down. Again, this is a fine line. I don't want to be uh, cutting so slow that it grabs the wood. I don't want to be cutting so fast that I can't keep up because even though you push on this, it kind of feeds itself. So I'm going to line up my line here and just go all the way around like so. Now if I get to a point where the angle is a little bit difficult or I'm binding things, I can always come back like so and cut out this section to give me a, a better area to work. So let me get this cut out. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm about halfway through the work. I've cut this side and this side off. Again, my foot is off the sewing machine pedal here. But now what I want to do is back out and cut this off so I can just deal with this and not have to worry about this wood flopping around. So let's do that. There we go. I can just pull this out, raise this up a little bit pull this out and then I can go ahead and work instead of having to pull out I can either pull my blade off and start up here again or um, get into that corner or even start off out here a little bit and then come back and turn around and um, clean it up later but now I'm just going to cut this part out and this part out here again my foot's off the sewing machine pedal but I just want to remember it's easier to cut inside the line instead of right on the line you can always go back and and come back into it and get right on the line or even if it's your first time you can sand it or do something but once you cut past into there too much then the next thing you know you're sanding the whole thing your hole is really big and you don't want that so again it's just easier to back out of it and then come closer to the line like that if you need to and again don't be afraid to adjust your speed Okay, I've gotten down to the end now. Take my foot off. You can see I'll tilt this up a little bit. I still have to catch that line right here. It was hard to do from this angle. So now that I'm all the way down, I can come back around like so. It's easier if I do this when the blade's on, but I can now it'll be easier for me to line that up and then I can back out of it and go back down here and cut this line right to the corner. And there we go. So I'll cut out. Now I can go along, touch up the edges if I need to. Let's get that piece out of there. Again, always keep your foot off that pedal. Um, I can go along. I got a little edge right there that I can knock down just a tad like this now that nothing's in the way. Again, a lot of using one of these is about the speed and the tension on the blade. So um, now I'm going to unplug everything and pull this off here and show you what it looks like. So it's just the opposite of last time. I loosen my blade tension back here a little bit. 
I raise up the guard like so. I push this down. I pull the blade out like so. And then there we go. Got a little touch up to do here. A little file and a little fine sandpaper. But there's your F hole. So I'm rolling up some fine wet dry here so I can get a little radius on it like that. I could also wrap it around a drill bit or something like that, but just basically taking that light sandpaper and knocking off those edges that really aren't that clean from where you cut things out. exciting sitting watching me sand so for one of my typical boxes I want to put these on there would be relatively small I want to remember there are some manufacturers that you can cut these holes in rough and if you know the size of their pre-made sound holes they would sit above here and bolt on like one of the sound holes I showed you but it would be a cover for this but uh, there's nothing like doing something it looks a little bit rustic so there you go so there it is guys you see a really big f hole i can actually do one uh, i hope you learned in this lesson that there are some things you can do with templates randy bretts uh, sent me a link about all kinds of templates for f holes uh, i'm going to put that down below on a link thank you randy Randy's been around Cigar Box Guitars forever. Shout out to you, Randy. Thanks. And his link is below. Uh, but the lesson for today is a couple of things. First off, over there are my two of my tools that I really, really value. And that's the scroll saw, the belt sander. I couldn't do it without Forstner bits and a flat cut saw. But maybe I should do an episode of some of the tools I really depend on. But next thing is... Never underestimate the value of the computer. You can uh, trace one. You can scan it. Uh, I'm going to get into the headstock episode pretty soon where I show you how to trace a headstock and then size it on a computer uh, length with whatever you want to do so it fits the stock you're using to make your headstocks out of. But that's it. No one can say that I didn't show you an episode about F-holes. See you next time.